Good morning slash afternoon to everybody. My name is Alyssa Godwin, as previously stated. And this semester, I had the wonderful opportunity to perform an independent research study that was exploratory in nature. And I studied the effects of listening to versus playing music on alpha, beta, and gamma brainwave activity. The majority of the study took place between January and March, and since then, I've been fine-tuning my paper and pre uh, preparing to present here. And I'm so excited to share with you what I found. So when understanding brainwave activity, it can usually be um, divided into five main types, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and theta. But my study covered alpha, beta, and gamma. Now alpha is the lowest of the frequencies that I've studied. It occurs between eight and 12 hertz, and it's more associated with passive states of attention, passive states of arousal, and inhibition of certain brain areas. But beta occurs between 12 and 30 hertz. It's more associated with attention towards external stimuli as well as higher states of alertness, including focus, stress, and anxiety, such as what I felt yesterday when I was driving through Atlanta. <laughs> as for gamma, it occurs between 30 and 45 hertz, and it's the highest of the frequencies that I studied. It's associated with concentration as well as cognitive um, activity as well as motor activity. So as I was going through previous studies that had to do with similar topics as to what I wanted to study, I noticed that they could be divided into one of two categories, either listening to music or playing music. Now as for the studies that studied listening to music or some other auditory stimuli, I noted that many of them found that high alpha was associated with calmer audio or calmer music, but increased beta was the opposite. It was more associated with faster music, higher tempo, or louder music, higher decibel level. Now, as for the studies that looked at playing music, gamma seemed to interact or have a correlation with emotionality. As a piano player played a more depressed portion of a song, their gamma was lower. But as they transitioned into a more exciting section and it pulled on their emotions, their gamma increased as well. Additionally, gamma seemed to also have a correlation with sound quality improvement. As a beginner musician learned how to play an instrument and their sound quality slowly improved, their gamma also increased. So, as I mentioned before, these studies could be placed into one of two categories, listening to music or playing music. And I was really interested in comparing the two states. Therefore, my research question was, what are the effects of listening to versus playing music on alpha, beta, and gamma brainwave activity? My hypothesis is that playing a song on the piano will involve greater gamma and beta activity than listening to the same song. And alpha activity will be greater during listening portions than playing portions of the procedure. Now, as for my participants, I had a very small subject, subject pool because I needed a specific type of talent being able to play the piano. I had six participants, all of which are music majors, from the Anderson University South Carolina School of the Arts. It was a within subject study, so all of them experienced all three experimental states. And it, I also gathered them through word of mouth, so there were no marketing materials that were used. Now, I had access to a school iPad and an EEG headset by the brand or company in use, and I connected this to the iPad through the Muse or through the Mind Monitor app. Oh, we also used an Anderson University practice room so that we could have soundproofing panels on the wall and a piano already provided for us. So as for my procedures, I had three main experimental states. First was the control. I had each of the participants come in and sit down at the piano bench and I just asked them to rest for a minute and a half and recorded this using that Mind Monitor app. Then we transitioned into the listening portion. Now Anderson University is a Christian school and many of my students were very familiar with um, the song Greater New Lord by All Sons and Daughters is played at our required chapels quite often. So I figured it would be a great song to use in our study to reduce performance anxiety and have a song that everyone's familiar with. So I played a three minute portion of the song Greater New Lord by All Sons and Daughters off of my phone and had them listen to it. And the selection of the section of the song that I chose aligned with what I then asked them to play in the performance section. In this section, I asked them to play a verse, a chorus, and then an interlude into the bridge, and then a final chorus of the song. And I sent out a chord chart, charts in advance so that um, they could practice and reduce any sort of performance anxiety because I wanted to control that as much as possible. When I went to send, send this information to myself, I was able to email it through the Mind Monitor app, which I then um, put into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, 
And then I was able to make charts and do um, a rolling average in order to analyze all the data. So moving into my results, the first section that I analyzed was the listening data. And I noticed an interesting pattern among my first participant. It seems that in comparison to the rest of my participants, this participant had a lot of alpha, beta, and gamma overlap. But the rest of my participants showed a different pattern. It seems as though as alpha increases, gamma also increases. And if you can definitely see this right here, there's an alpha peak towards the end, and with that, gamma also increases. But for Plank, I noticed a different pattern. It seemed that when alpha increased, gamma either decreased or stayed the same. You can see an alpha peak in my second participant towards the end of their performance. But their playing, the gamma, it basically flatlines. But we can also see this um, decrease in gamma right around um, my participant's fifth, or my fifth participant's data. As alpha tends to increase, gamma tends to decrease. So there didn't really seem to be many similarities between each of my participants and um, their alpha results for both their listening and playing procedures. And there was greater variation in the playing condition than in the listening condition. But I didn't note that one condition seemed to, you know, have higher alpha than the other, which I found was interesting. And then as for beta, participants one, four, and five had similar beta levels in both of their conditions. But participants two and six had decreased beta in the listening procedures than the playing procedures, which is what I had hypothesized would be the norm for all six of my participants, but clearly this was not the case. As for gamma, it was lower during the listening procedure for participants three and six, which is what was hypothesized would be the norm. However, with the rest of my participants, it was similar between conditions. On to my discussion. The first thing that I mentioned was how, it, how my results related to my hypothesis. Now, as mentioned before, my hypothesis um, hypothesized that alpha would be higher during the listening procedures, and this was not the case. However, the results that there was greater overall variation in the playing condition than in the listening condition could be related to levels of focus and relaxation. As stated before, alpha is more associated with states of relaxation, whereas beta is more associated with focus. All of my participants are music majors, so they have to learn a large repertoire of music throughout their semester. The song that I gave them is fairly simple in comparison to many of the other musical opportunities that they have. So they might have had more relaxation than say someone who just plays piano for fun. Additionally, as for beta, there were little notable patterns in beta activity between the listening and the playing procedures. This didn't match previous literature that suggested beta would be higher in focused tasks. And focused task is presumably more associated with playing an instrument rather than just listening to music. So this also did not match my hypothesis. However, I realized that because all of my participants are music majors, they are trained to analyze music very carefully as they listen to it. So as they were doing the listening procedures, they might have been analyzing a lot more than the average person who is not musically trained. That could explain as to why the beta levels um, did not match my hypothesis. Now as for gamma, it was relatively consistent across conditions. This did not match my hypothesis, nor did it match previous literature that suggested gamma would be more associated with motor activity, which of course is during the playing procedures. But then I remembered. Gamma is also associated with cognitive activity. And as I mentioned before, my music majors were probably analyzing the piece as they were listening to it. That cognitive activity could explain as to why gamma was consistent across both conditions. Now, personality also seemed to have a role in how each of my participants played their instrument. Five out of the six of my participants had very creative performances. While they stuck to the arrangement that I gave them, they added in their own creative little fills, and they might have played the melody along with the chords that I gave them. But one of my participants had a very mechanical performance, and this, this was striking to me. This participant is primarily a trumpet player, but also knows how to play piano. And as they were playing, they played just the block chords as they were written. They didn't really add anything to their performance. And when I was looking at their results, participant four, I noticed that instead of having these great leaps in alpha, beta, or gamma, their data seemed to, I guess, fluctuate around a baseline. It stayed relatively in the same area throughout their entire performance. And I realized that emotionality can be related to brain activity, specifically with gamma. 
because there was little emotionality in this participant's playing, this could explain as to why there weren't many gamma leaps, for example. And also, they seem to have a rather steady level of focus and relaxation throughout the entire performance, which would explain as to why alpha and beta were also fairly consistent. I put this chart up here again because it can see it seems to fluctuate around the baseline, whereas the rest of my participants seem to have an alpha, beta, or gamma um, peak throughout their performance. Moving into timing of the song and different types of spikes, alpha, beta, and gamma seem to spike at different parts of the song. And I listed them above. They are the beginning of the first chorus, the interlude, the beginning of the bridge, the building of the bridge, the first time the bridge lyrics state the title of the song, Great Are You Lord, and then the beginning of the final chord. And if you'll notice, all of these points in the song are transition sections. Now, alpha is associated with relaxation. This could have indicated some sort of peak in alpha towards the interlude, because the interlude is a very calm part of the song. And then as for beta, again, it's associated with focus and alertness. If my music majors were very focused in noting each of the transitions as they happened, or anticipating them because they're familiar with the song, this could explain a beta peak. And as for gamma, of course, emotionality is associated with gamma activity. So if a certain part of the song pulled on their emotions, this could explain as to why gamma peaked in certain areas of the song. As for my study's limitations, of course, as mentioned before, I had a small sample size. So the results of my study are not necessarily generalizable. <laughs> um, as for my EEG, EEG equipment, it was not completely consistent. Um, I had a TP9 receptor that I tried to use for all six of my participants, but unfortunately for the final participant, only the TP7 tracked their data. So unfortunately, I was not able to use that TP9 as a stable um, area in order to analyze all of their data using the same receptor. I'm grateful that I still had the TP7 receptor, but it would have been helpful to have the TP9 for all six. Also for participant two and their um, control data, during resting, while it appeared that the data was tracking, when I put it into the Excel file, the first 45 seconds were lost. So unfortunately, the control data is slightly skewed in my second participant. As for our practice room, while there was soundproofing panels and it was about as quiet as I could probably get on campus, it wasn't entirely soundproofed. And what I mean by that is that as we were doing the control session and I was having the participant rest, we could hear an opera singer on our right and a trombone player on our left, so there's probably a little bit of auditory stimuli in that control data, unfortunately. As for future directions, it would be so interesting to see a study that looks at listening to music and the differences between someone who is a musician and a non-musician, because as mentioned before, musicians are trained to analyze music as they listen to it, but a non-musician isn't necessarily going to do that. Looking at the ways that their brainwaves respond to the music, comparing these non-musicians and musicians could give us a little bit more insight into all of the correlates of alpha, beta, and gamma. Additionally, having better EEG headsets for any further study would help prevent the types of um, interactions that I found along the way. And finally, looking for ways to integrate EEG studies into music therapy techniques could help clients that need help and relaxation. If there's a client that's particularly prone to anxiety and we want to help that client, some of the ways that we could do that is look for ways that music tends to increase alpha associated with relaxation and decreases beta associated with stress and anxiety. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. It has been an honor to present here today. Before we go, are there any questions about my study?
appreciate that question. That is such a good point. I think that if I could do a future study, I would try to do um, replicate this with more participants and also put the playing activity first so that they can get that out of the way. Then we might have like a minute or maybe three minute break so that they could relax and then move into the listening procedures. Um, and I think that would be so interesting. And then also, I love that you mentioned that about motor activity. I know that there's been studies done on trying to anticipate, okay, if I know I'm about to do a dance performance, I'm gonna visualize exactly what I'm gonna do before I get on that stage so that I do better. And I know that those motor activities and mirror neurons um, also tend to re react to that. So I would love to do a study on that. Thank you so much for um, advising me to do that. I would love to do that in the future. sure how it would change the data set. An idea that I have is that it might increase beta a little bit um, as beta is more associated with focus and then it might also increase gamma a bit because gamma is associated with concentration. Um, as far as the uh, choice of the song, I chose it because it was something that all of my music majors were familiar with. Um, and I tried to choose a song that they probably hadn't heard be overplayed um, because I wanted them to enjoy the session. And I also, this was in the midst of midterms. I didn't want them to feel overwhelmed if I presented them with a new song that they would have to learn in, you know, with the other, you know, 300 songs they probably have to learn per semester. Um, so that is why I chose that song. But in the future, if I had access to a greater subject pool and also more people that are willing to participate, that is absolutely a direction that I would love to take because I want to remove as much bias as possible. Um, 